So working with some more laws, what does the distributive law of multiplication over addition involve? What do you think? Multiplication over addition involves both addition and multiplication. Duh, but in different, different ways. So, we want to compute 2 times 5 plus 7, and we want to do it in two different ways. So the first one, I could compute on the inside 5 plus 7 first. So that will give me 2 times 12, which gives me 24. Okay, so I computed and then I distributed 2 to it. Or what else could we have done? I could have distributed 2 to 5 and said 2 times 5, compute that first. Then add 2 times 7. So in that case, what are we looking at? 10 plus 14 is 24. So when we're dealing just with plain numbers, arithmetic numbers, we generally think in this order. Simplify inside of the parentheses, then multiply by 2. But if we have variables here, we can't combine them if they're not like terms. So we have to distribute to each of them. So the distributive law of multiplication over addition. Again, what happens? If B and C can't be combined, then to simplify this and get rid of those parentheses, I have to distribute A to B and add, since I'm dealing with addition, A times C. Same thing with subtraction, but what do you think changes? AB minus AC, distributing to each. All right, so compute. Try by distributing those two expressions. Simplify them. All right, so what did you get out of A? If I distribute 3 to 5, I'm looking at 15 plus 3 times 2, 6. So all together we had 21. And if I distribute 4 into 10, we're looking at 40 minus 4 times 6 will give us 24. So that difference altogether was 16, which makes sense if we simplified in the beginning first. I have 4 times 4 gives me 16, or 5, 6, 7 times 3 gives us 21. But again, get comfortable with distribution. We're going to use it a lot. So, what are the terms of an expression? It is anything separated by an addition sign. Anything separated by an addition sign. All right. So, what are the terms of this expression? So basically, whatever sign is attached goes with the number. So its terms are 8x, negative 12y, and 32. So you try. What are the terms of that expression? How's it split up? So 6y is one of them, 44z is another, 37 and negative b. Sign goes with the term. Awesome. So, the distributive laws are a basis for doing what? Multiplying algebraic expressions. In an expression like 4 times that quantity, we multiply each term on the inside, now that we know what terms are, by what? 4. So, anything on the inside needs to be multiplied by 4 on the outside. So, what do we get out of here? If we're trying to simplify and remove those parentheses, 4 times a will give me 4a. 4 times negative 3b will give us minus 12b. 4 times 2 will give us 8. And we want to see, can I combine anything else? We don't have any other like terms. So, let's do a few examples so we get comfortable with this distributive law. So, I have 9 times this whole entire quantity. So I need to distribute 9 times 3x will give me 27x, 9 times 2, 18. Can't combine them, they're not like terms, so we got to leave it there. You can also distribute a fraction, that's totally legal. So 2 thirds times w will give us 2w over 3, or 2 thirds w, however you want to say it. 
2 thirds times a negative 1 will give us minus 2 thirds. And again, we can't combine them. What do you notice about part C that's different from what we've seen? 9 is positive, 2 thirds is positive, but we have a negative in this case. So what has to happen there? We have to distribute both the 2 and the negative to each term. So don't forget about him on the front. So negative 2 times x will give us minus 2x. Negative times a negative will give us a positive 6y. Negative 2 times positive 4t will give us minus 8t. Can't combine any of them because we don't have any like terms. So give these two a shot. Distribute, get rid of those parentheses, and simplify if you can. So for the first one, what happens? 3 fourths times 2. So what are we going to be left with there? I guess we can just break it down. And 3 fourths times 4. So 2 goes into 4 2 times, so I'm left with 3 halves z. And what term am I left with over here? Same thing, divided by the same thing is going to be gone. I'm kind of left with a factor of 3. And again, for part B, we have a negative. Negative has to go with it. We distribute the whole entire thing to each term inside of the parentheses. So negative 3 times 4 will give us minus 12. Negative 3 to positive 2t will be minus 6t. And a negative 3 times a negative 5 will give us plus 15. Oh, it's an S. Okay. My handwriting is so on point right now. So what are we looking at? Plus 3s. There we go. Now we all agree. Sweet. So just a little review to recap the different laws. What do each of these mean? So what property am I using to be able to group in a different way? Grouping is the associative law. Who do I want to associate together? If I take two-fifths and multiply by one, I get the same thing back out. Again, one is what in this case? What operation are we talking about? Multiplication, so multiplicative. And the word we need is identity. Because when I get out an identity, I'm not changing. Not changing, it's just one. All right. What allows us to move here on that third line? Again, we're just changing the grouping, so we're using the associative law again. But we had one for addition, one for multiplication. Same thing. What about in the fourth row? If I change the order of addition, we are commuting, using the commutative law. And one, two, three, four, fifth. Fifth line down. What happens here? So I took five and I distributed to each. So we used the distributive law. It allows us to do that. And what about zero? We're dealing with addition. So I know it's going to be the additive something. And again, what's happening? When I add zero to that number, I get the same thing back out. So I haven't changed anything. I'm looking at an identity. All right. 